you know, I just always liked having personal relationships with designers. And, and I think, um, you know, one of the things like why I've, you know, uh, walked for Jean-Paul Gaultier or like Elie Saab, all the, all these people that I wear their clothes a lot. They like me because I know what I want to wear and I don't need to be guided. And there's a few people, other people like Diane Kruger's like that. She like, doesn't work with the style. She's very like direct with, um, the fashion houses that she want, wants to wear their clothes. I think so, you know, I just always, that's, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like I know, I know what I want to wear. I can, I can look on Vogue.com and be like, can I borrow that dress for a red carpet? Which is so rare in Hollywood and in the business today. There's the exception. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing against stylists. And I get that there's people when you're making, when you're making a big movie or something, you know, you're making a movie, you don't have time, but I have time and I enjoy like, so I think it's like, I'm not putting down like people that use stylists and or, or the stylist either. It's like, and they're ama they're amazing. It's just like, for me, it's not, you know, I, and also I pull from my own wardrobe. I have a huge archive of nice vintage and I, you know, I wear the same things over and over again too. And, um, you know, I enjoy dressing myself and not having to even bother like going, what am I going to wear? I, I will go right into my closet and pull out a 30s dress and be like, haven't worn this in a while, you know? Who who in Hollywood or like in the public eye, like besides Dan Kruger, like whose style do you just, I mean, your style is very unique, but just whose style can you just look at and say like, I love your style. Tilda Swinton always looks good. And she's always lovely and interesting to look at. And you're like, wow. She's she's somebody that I'm always like, wow. Um, God, I'm trying to think of who else right now. There's certainly lots of people that that I think are amazing. Um, but she's, she's, I just saw her kind of recently. I was like, you did it again. Like always perfect. You once did an interview where you said, you know, you really looked up to Madonna for her style that like, you know, she's someone who taught you to like to be an individual. And she's one of kind of the only modern day style icons that just kind of is Madonna and just sticks to her brand. I mean, throughout, you know, her entire history, I just feel like she's kind of like one of those people that I love because she's gone into all of these different realms, like when she was Evita and she went so deep into like the 1940s thing. And I just, I like, and obviously like erotica period and going into the fetish realm, um, all of that kind of thing. You know, she just kind of like turns over every stone and, and goes to the highest level of glamour in fashion when she sets her mind to it. I always thought that erotica was, you know, that you were the Dita that she referred to, but it's really no. Dita Parlo. Totally. Yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It was like, a. I was really into like silent film stuff. I had my hair cut into like a little black box. This is like before the first, when I was first Dita, I was, um, yeah, I had like this little Louise Brooks haircut and was working in a strip club and um, yeah, definitely in my twenties phase. Well, when the celebration tour comes to LA, you need to go see it because it's just true. Oh, yeah, I, I have to see it. I'm really happy for her that she's doing really well on this tour. It's the, yeah. such a great tour. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Madonna, what do you think of, you know, like last year, like 50 Cent, like, you know, came out and said, like, I don't need to see Granny and her panties based oh. on like her, right? Like her Instagram and like, Ooh. I mean, so where where are we? Like, what do you think of that? Where are we in the world today that you know, someone like Madonna, who is 65, just can't be Madonna on her own Instagram. Right. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great if we could get throw some of the misogyny and ageism in the trash finally. I mean, yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, and I feel like age is one of like the la the final insults people try to grab onto when they don't have anything else. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that they love to sling around. Like, I feel like I've been um, you know, I remember being like 35 doing an interview and the interviewer saying, and I always, it's always in my head this way, because it was in like a German accent. And he was like, what will you do now that you are going to get older and you will be not interesting anymore when you are old? And I was like, dude, I'm 35, by the way. And also like, you know, and, I, and it's like, <laughs> 
that's a long time ago now. And I was kind of like at the top of my game, I think. Like I was, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about that. And it's just like those, but you know, even when you're a woman in your twenties or, you know, the ageism, you, people put the fear in you. And I think it's just, it's really, it's a, it's an interesting part of life, isn't it? It's like, what, what is that? What is that? I don't understand. I mean, you know, and Madonna too got it at 40. You know, it was like, what are you going to do now that you're Madonna and dressing this way in 40? And now, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's weird. I, I mean, I love, like for me, it's always been important to me to see women um, embracing their sensuality um, in, in when they're a little bit older than me. So I always looked at like, you know, Gwen Stefani who's like, few years old, five, four or five years older than me, JLo, like, you know, Madonna, looking at people who are like a little bit ahead of me and it, it has meaning for me to see what they can do. And so, you know, for me as a striptease star, I feel, you know, I got to like walk the walk, you know, I can't just talk the talk. I got to be like, I'm, I can do this. Like, I'm not going to go hide myself or quit because of like, oh, maybe my ass is like not as good as when I was 25. And then, you know, I just go, what, what, what am I, what I should be standing for this as well, which I am, you know, I'm very like, um, I think I've probably retired myself many times over the years. And of course I thought when I was 40, it was going to be, I was going to be done, you know, like, and it's really interesting, all this stuff that gets instilled in us that we kind of like shame ourselves. And, and yeah, um, I just, I also think a lot about like, uh, uh, okay, what if I just become better at things too? What if I just like get better at what I do as I advance in age? Like, does that counteract for you? Maybe that like, I might have a wrinkle here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I think it's important for people to see, and it, it has power and meaning and, um, and I, and so hopefully things can change and people can stop thinking that way or stop being so terrible to people who are older and in entertainment or even just, you know, in life. Right. I would hope so too. Do you, have you gotten like a lot of, I guess, criticism? I don't know if backlash is the right word in your career, like from women in the sense that, you know, like I think people just lump a lot of things together, right? Like we were saying, like, you know, the men who like are wearing like, you know, silk stockings to work, like, right. That's not the same as being they, them, or all of this. I right. think people that are just not in the know, do you get, so I think people just lump in OnlyFans, burlesque, porn, it's all the same, Playboy, I mean, which you're on. Like, do you get a lot of like backlash or judgment from women throughout your career? Um, I feel like there have just been moments uh, and I mostly see it like, you know, for lack of a better word on paper or on a screen, like um, criticism from people who s maybe think they know what I do or they saw a picture and then they're like offended because they think that it's like, they're like, oh, this is like detrimental to women. And I'm like, well, well hold on, that theater was filled with 3,800 people. And I'd say about 85% uh, 